So what is turbidity? Take a look at the glass of water on the left. We can see through the water because it isn't cloudy. Now take a look at the glass on the right. We can't really see through it at all because it's clouded with tiny materials, in this case sediment, that don't let any light pass through. Turbidity is the measure of water clarity, which is the amount of light that can pass through the water. In general, clear water is an indicator of healthy streams. Water clarity is impacted by suspended materials in the water, such as soil particles, so think clay, silt, and sand, and algae, plankton, microbes, and other really, really small particles. So clear water has lower turbidity, and cloudy or murky water has higher turbidity. Right, so why does any of this matter anyway? Turbid waters can clog gills of aquatic organisms, reduce their resistance to disease, lower growth rates, and limit their ability to see or catch food. As solid particles settle, they can blanket the bottom of the stream. So this can smother fish eggs and other critters who are living at the bottom of the stream. Turbidity can also increase water temperature, which we've talked about already, because those suspended particles can absorb more heat. And in Chapel Hill, soil erosion and sedimentation of streams is a serious threat to water quality. Too much sediment can carry other pollution into waterways, reduce dissolved oxygen, smother organisms in their habitat, clog storm drains and stormwater ponds, and also build up stream beds. That last bit makes flooding more likely because the stream will have less space to hold a lot of water during heavy rain. So what impacts turbidity? First is geology. So the types of material in the area where the stream flows, such as banks that have loose soil that are more likely to see erosion. Also the stream size. So large rivers may have microscopic plants that increase turbidity. And also seasonal weather. So spring snow melt and rain can increase runoff, which generally also increases turbidity. For example, the start of the school year is often during peak hurricane season, which often dumps a ton of rain down on Chapel Hill. So if you look at picture 3A, this is Morgan Creek by Merritt's Pasture just a few weeks before Hurricane Florence in 2018. So if you notice this green sign right here. So picture 3B is the same creek but on the other side of the creek. And that green sign is somewhere around here so it's completely underwater. And you can see how turbid that water is because it pulled so much sediment. Also the plant root systems. So roots help hold soil in place and out of rivers and streams. So fires, floods, windstorms, and other natural events can take out this vegetation, which would increase erosion and turbidity, which we did see in a lot of streams after Hurricane Florence. So activities that increase erosion, so road building or overgrazing development or deeping or dredging of channels, poor erosion control at construction sites, these can all increase turbidity in our local waters. So how do we measure turbidity? So turbidity is measured in nephilometric turbidity units. This is quite a mouthful, and I may have said it wrong, so we just say NTUs. There are lots of ways to measure turbidity, including light meters and turbidity tubes. Staff in my office will use an electric turbidity meter. To do this, we take a sample of the water in a small vial. The meter measures how much light the particles in our sample will scatter. So as a result, we can get a really accurate measurement of turbidity, which is required if we ever use this data for regulatory purposes. We only have one of these meters, so we use turbidity tubes with volunteers in school programs. So a turbidity tube, which is seen here on the right, is a clear tube with a Secchi disc at the bottom. Created in 1965 by Angelo Secchi, Secchi discs were first used to measure turbidity in deep waters. Still used today, the disc is attached to a pole or a line and is slowly lowered into the water. The depth at which the disc is no longer visible is the measure of turbidity. A turbidity tube has a small Secchi disc at the bottom. So what you do is you fill the tube with your water sample and slowly release the water from the valve at the bottom until the disc becomes visible. Then you measure the depth of the water in centimeters and use a chart to convert it to NTUs. The measurements are fairly subjective. It depends on your eyeballs and how bright it is around you. But turbidity tubes are reliable enough to be used in programs across the country. So what can we do to lower turbidity? So like all pollution, the best approach is to address it at its source. This includes reducing stormwater runoff, 
restoring eroded stream banks, and applying industry-specific best management practices, or BMPs. Best management practices are activities that help minimize the effects of a particular activity on the environment. So in this case, for erosion from construction, examples include settling ponds or revegetating steep slopes, maintaining stream buffers, and maintaining drainage systems. If you notice erosion issues on large construction sites, you can call Orange County Erosion Control. On the other hand, if the site disturbs less than 20,000 square feet, you can call Chapel Hill Stormwater. For example, most residential lots are less than 20,000 square feet. So what did we learn? Turbidity is the measure of how much light passes through water. Turbid water is murky or cloudy, and non-turbid water is clear. Sediment from erosion is the most common cause of turbid waters in Chapel Hill, and turbidity is measured in NTUs. You can call Orange County Erosion Control or Chapel Hill Stormwater if you notice erosion issues at construction sites. Thank you for tuning into this video about turbidity. In the future, we'll be expanding the series to cover other exciting parameters. We'll learn more about benthic macroinvertebrates, who are your very cool neighbors, who also like to live in streams and sometimes under rocks, and sometimes they really like to eat algae. So be on the lookout for those.